We looked at one clip from Trump's former Attorney General Bill Barr earlier in the show from an interview he did with uh, Caitlin Collins on CNN. Now I want to do a deeper dive into that interview because it was super interesting to get from Trump's former Attorney General legal analysis about Trump's most recent indictment on charges related to his attempts to overturn potentially unlawfully the 2020 uh, election that was free and fair despite Trump's claims to the contrary. And uh, so I want to walk you through this with someone like Bill Barr. It's important to say this is not saying, oh, he's a hero or even that I respect him because of his past, his horrible decisions, his horrible leadership as Attorney General, all these different things, except for the very end in some ways. And uh, instead, it is look at someone who was in Trump's inner circle in kind of the legal realm of it, too, who now has these words to say. It's, of course, interesting. And uh, that's why we're talking about it. So we'll start here. He gets asked sort of, would you have proceeded with this indictment? And Bill Barr says, I don't know. I might not have probably just a fear of prosecuting a former president, but it's a totally legitimate indictment. And it's not the uh, story that the right wing is telling about an example of the federal government or the DOJ being weaponized against Trump. An investigation. But I mean, when you do look at the indictment, do you, do you think it's something you would have brought? I, I, I think I don't know if I would have approved the indictment, but it, it, in the sense I may have exercised discretion and not gone forward with the case. Uh, I'm also concerned about having this case going on during the election and diverting people's attention from the issues in the election. I'm also worried about, you know, what the impact is if there are acquittals uh, during during the uh, uh, campaign. But as a legal matter, I don't see a problem with with the indictment. I think uh, that uh, it's not an abuse. The the uh, Department of Justice is not acting uh, to weaponize the department by proceeding against the president for a conspiracy uh, to subvert the electoral the electoral process. There it is. I mean, just crushing someone who's not some liberal at all and ran interference for Trump in some incredibly dishonest ways when he was attorney general under Trump. And we'll get to later in this segment, still won't rule out voting for Trump, still willing to say, nah, these claims about this is just an example of it the uh, DOJ being weaponized against our dear leader and Trump's just a victim. He did nothing wrong. And oh my gosh, it's all terrible. And we just need to cry about it. It's just not accurate. It's not reasonable. And Jack Smith is bringing forward a very serious case based on what seem to be serious violations of the law. And I will say once again, I know for my full show viewers, we have a lot of segments about one subject or things related to the one subject with a big story like this, it can get redundant. But it is the system working. It is the justice system doing what it should do whenever even powerful, well-connected people, if there's evidence for them committing crimes, they're held accountable. That is good under the law, especially in every situation, but especially when it comes to efforts to throw our democratic process in the garbage can, which is what Donald Trump tried and luckily failed to do. But the lack of accountability legally would further increase the odds that someone's able to do this successfully in the future, what Trump tried to do with subverting the will of the people and disenfranchising voters. Next clip uh, here, he gets asked, uh, one of the notable parts of this clip is him saying, Jack Smith has more evidence for sure than just what's in the indictment to prove, or Bill Barr assumes that he does, to prove Donald Trump's state of mind, meaning he was deceiving people. He knew it and was lying and was attempting to, with the knowledge that he lost, keep himself in power, which furthers the fraud that was going on, the deceit, um, all of it. Do you think he knew that he lost the election? Do I personally believe that? Yeah, at first I wasn't sure, but I have come to believe that he uh, w knew well that he had lost the election. And... Uh, now, what, what I think is important is the government has assumed the burden of proving that. The government, in their indictment, takes the position that he had actual knowledge that he had lost the election and the election wasn't stolen through fraud. And they're going to have to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt. Which is a high bar, of course. It's a high bar. Now, that leads me to believe that they, we're only seeing a tip of the iceberg on this. You think indictment. Jack Smith has more? Oh, yes. I'm, 
I, I would believe he has a lot more. And uh, that's one of the things that impressed me about the indictment. It was very spare. And there were a lot of things he could have said in there. And I think there's a lot more to come. And I think they have a lot more evidence as to the, uh, President Trump's state of mind. I think so, too. We have talked about each step of the way, the way that the, well, honestly, all the investigations into Trump have proceeded. And as they've moved forward, we've talked about, especially with the Jack Smith investigation, how extensive going down every rabbit hole, getting every little bit of evidence, all the people that have been talked to that we at least just know from reporting. And for all that to be done, you know there's more that he didn't even need to include in the indictment that will be brought out later on. And I think if uh, by the language in this indictment, I'll encourage you once again to go read it, especially if you're saying this is all unfair and terrible, go read uh, the actual unsealed indictments on all the cases relating to Trump now three. But uh, you notice that it does talk about Trump's state of mind. And it does acknowledge that Trump was knowingly lying, knowingly deceiving people, knowingly attempting to defraud the American people. And so for that to be so boldly stated, I think Jack Smith, based on what we've seen from him, will have a whole lot to back that up. And it seems to be Bill Barr's view as well. One more moment here, and then we'll get to Bill Barr's answer about voting for Trump again, possibly. I'm back now with former Attorney General Bill Barr. We were just talking about special counsels. And one thing that I think gets glossed over just because so much is said by Trump every day are his attacks on Jack Smith. I mean, he calls him deranged. He called him a crackhead once. He implied that he had something to do with the cocaine that was found at the White House. I mean, when you when you hear the what a world we live in those comments that he makes about the person who's prosecuting him, what do you think? Uh, you know, it, to me, it's it's amazing that it, you read through the indictment and his behavior in that indictment, and it's nauseating. It's despicable behavior, whether it's criminal or not. Someone who engaged in that kind of bullying about a process that is fundamental to our system and to our self-government shouldn't be anywhere near the Oval Office. Shouldn't be anywhere near the Oval Office. I totally, 100% agree. If you are trying to run for an office that is elected democratically, and in your past, you have in that very office you're now wanting to get back into, used your power within the office to try to subvert that democratic process you should not be trusted by the people who have the power within the uh, within the democratic process to put you back into that position of power of course not but then bill barr says this you recently told nbc news you were asked if you'd support trump and you said you'll jump off that bridge when you get to it mm -hmm. are you ready to jump off that bridge no it's, it, you know i'll have to wait to see what the situation is and i'll pick my poison at that point so you aren't ready to rule out if he's the nominee saying you won't vote for him. I'm just saying I'll pick my poison at that point. <laughs> Come on, William. Take this seriously. He said before, well, I mean, if there's a progressive Democrat running as a Demo uh, on the Democratic side as the nominee, then I might have to vote for the Republican candidate. Really? Because there's a difference between a basic respect for an obligation to the Constitution and thus the democratic process, and then all the other policy differences you could have. And all those policy differences matter, but not if we don't have a functioning democratic process, because then we can't use that democratic process to debate and to have the push and pull of power to make decisions on those policies. And so for you to look at a situation where Biden's going to be the nominee, Trump probably will be on the other side and say, if it was Trump and Biden, eh, I don't know, maybe Biden will lower prescription drug costs too much. Oh, no. <laughs> maybe Biden will do another. Oh, my goodness. Oh, jeez, guys. I just had some. A little article start playing a video uh maybe biden will do another bill that will invest in infrastructure in a historic manner and improve roads and bridges and get broadband out to communities and invest in the lack of clean drinking water to address that problem that millions of americans experience but god forbid he's too progressive but see 
even a very progressive Democrat that you apparently have huge issue with, uh, issues with Bill Barr, at least they would respect you voting them out the next time around. Donald Trump might not respect that or his ideology, his respect for our democratic process does not um, exist like it should. And for Bill Barr to still not be able to decide on that shows you just how deeply flawed his set of principles are on this subject, even though he accurately criticizes Trump here and there. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes this show possible, plus get access to the full video version of the show hours before all the clips are able to be uploaded to the YouTube channel, plus get the bonus show on the weekends, you can do so by going to lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. That's lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership, and there's a link in the description.